way. I'll move over here. Uh, first item on the agenda is roll call. I think uh, everyone's here except for two people. John Higgins is not here today. He'll be back next month. And Lonnie Dooley, I thought she was going to be here, but she is not. So everybody's here except for those two I, I received an email from Lonnie. She's running, running late. She'll be here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, approval of the agenda. Are there any additions to the agenda? Yeah. Yes. The only thing is that I thought we had discussed the security measures in the senior centre at the last meeting. Was I mistaken? Yeah. What? Uh, it was, um, we asked questions of Ronnie yeah. about the security measures. Yeah. Do you have it in your report? But it's not on the agenda. On the, oh, sorry. Well, We're doing oh, agenda. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So you're talking about? I'm talking about minutes, not the agenda. Minutes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, we okay. safety as a whole. Yeah, you're making the mistake I make every week or every month. <laughs> All right. Uh, are there any additional, any items of, uh, that we need to add to the agenda? If not, I'll uh, ask for a motion for approval. So moved. Okay. A second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Did everybody say aye? Aye. aye. Okay. Um, <laughs> is there any, uh, any opposed? All right. Now, this approval of the previous month's minutes. Uh, does anybody have any corrections or additions to the minutes? So is this? I'm on his answer. Uh, see, I thought I thought there was some discussion in here about the. Yes, so is just there is a note about the security it wasn't oh, okay. as comprehensive. Okay, so. So, but I'm satisfied with what Ronnie okay. has said. All right. Okay. If there are, I, ha, I made one. I made one correction to the uh, minutes, and that's just by the one C three. That's the only thing. I don't know if you even noticed that. Yes. All right. If there are no corrections, I'll ask for a motion for approval. I approve. Uh, Sheila made a motion. A second. Second. Okay, Eric. Yeah. Okay, Eric moved a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes? I, I'm, you know, of the uh, minutes? Aye. Say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. All right. um, public to be heard. Is there anyone here that wants to be heard? May I suggest I am just observing? Yep. But um, can I reserve the right to see to make a comment after whatever else proceeds? Uh, I think this is the time that you would make your comments if you have a. Well, I have no idea what your business is. I want to wait and see and see what I hear. It's my first time here. I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. So, city policy only allows non board members during the, the meetings to talk during this part of the agenda. Um, you're, you're certainly welcome to, to, to watch, but only the board is allowed to participate. And okay. it's similar to how city council meetings yeah. um, are. I'm not yeah. familiar with any of that, but okay. Just and if, if you have questions at the end, you know, Ronnie or I, or I'm sure anyone would be willing to talk with you at, at the end. Okay. Are you sure there isn't anything you want to bring up now? No, I have okay. no agenda. I'm just okay. trying to see what happens. All right, item five, old business. All right. Marsha, I think that's you. Well, you're going to have to go around me because I've never projected from this before, and so I need to figure out how to. Oh, okay. No, maybe I don't. If I can, if I'm on the screen, so that's fine. I'll do it now. Okay. And so you're projecting, so you don't even have to stand. Right. And share. And have no interest in doing this. 
Do you need to dim the lights? Uh, ask the others. Good. This is fine. That's fine? Yeah. So, um, last time uh, we were talking about getting ordinances passed, I guess, and there was a lot of confusion about that process. And so uh, I offered to just do a little summary of uh, how the city council agenda works and, and how things get passed. And this is very basic, and I didn't do any cute cartoons or anything like that, so you're, you know, you're gonna have to bear with my boring slides but uh, we can go through it pretty fast and uh, everybody stop me if I stop making sense. Um, so first of all, city council works on a, a semi-regular schedule. You know, there are holidays and, and spring break and all these things that happen. Some months have four Tuesdays and some have five Tuesdays. Um, so uh, the schedule sort of gets adapted based on what's going on. But the city charter requires that there are two so-called regular sessions every month, which is typically the first and third Tuesday, but not always. Um, they can be scheduled on any Tuesday, but there really have to be two of them, or we're in violation of the city charter. Um, the time and the place, it's always seven o'clock on a Tuesday in the city council chambers, but the time and the place has to be posted in a designated location, which is first on the city website and second on the front door of City Hall, um, uh, five days in advance to tell you where uh, the meeting will be so that anyone in the public can arrange to be there. It's also live streamed on a couple different channels, on Longmont Public Media and on the city channel. And if you still have Comcast, uh, um, on the, uh, what channel is that, 6 and, channel oh, pardon me? It's Channel 8. Channel 8 okay. and 880. Um, so there are lots of ways to watch City Council, but to participate, uh, you have to be physically present in the Council Chambers. So that's live on Channel 8? Yes, it's live. Yeah. It's live. It's live on the City website and live on Longmont Public Media as well, as well as uh, you can watch it afterwards. Um, ordinances that are, you know, proposed ordinances that will become city statutes can only be introduced, read, and voted on during regular sessions, so that two Tuesdays a month. Mm -hmm. um, additional sessions called study sessions may be held on alternate Tuesdays, but the charter does not require them to be held. Um, and you can't pass any laws there. You can make motions to direct the city to work on stuff, um, pass, uh, uh, you know, that, that kind of rules, uh, but you can't change the law except during a regular session. Um, and then one Tuesday per month, typically, the city council meets as the Longmont Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. Uh, which is a fairly new thing since the city council uh, took over the administration of the Longmont Housing Authority because it was in deep trouble. And uh, us, the city doing it saved a bunch of money and also allowed us to um, uh, hire uh, more skilled people to get the work done because uh, it's a more secure job working for the city than for a housing authority. Um, the housing authority's troubles were not unique to Longmont by any means. Um, so this is the kind of thing that's happening all over the country because of the way HUD administers housing authorities. Um, so you know it's kind of a shaky business model, and I hope that will will improve. Um, anyway, the fifth Tuesday if in five in five Tuesday months can be another study session, uh, or it can um, be canceled and given another night off. To pass an ordinance, it has to be read <coughs> before the public twice, um, and not on not in the same regular session. So it typically takes two weeks to get an ordinance through and, and have it set to become part of the municipal code. When you pass a first reading, 
Then uh, two weeks later, you pass a second reading, usually two weeks later. Each reading has to be only at a regular session. And to advance, the ordinance has to receive at least four votes um, out of the <coughs> city council present. And the city council can have, there is normally seven people, including the mayor, but uh, there can be uh, as few as five present and still have a quorum. Okay, first reading. Ordinances are typically introduced at first reading. Um, the ordinance, the group of ordinances, and there are usually quite a number of them, are introduced on what's called the consent agenda. Um, and what happens is the city clerk reads through the whole consent agenda. And a lot of these things don't require any discussion at all. Hangar leases on the airport, um, you know, um, I'm trying to think of another really, uh, you know, intergovernmental agreements to exchange data with another uh, municipality or with Boulder County often doesn't need uh, anything. Uh, supplemental appropriations because we received grant money that the council had already authorized us to, to apply for. Those are the kinds of things that, that don't necessarily require debate. Um, and so, the way the consent agenda works is that first any council member or the staff may request that something be taken off the consent agenda for discussion and then somebody moves the rest of the consent agenda and it just shoots right through to the next step with no discussion. Um, so there are really two, two good reasons why something gets removed from the consent agenda. One is there is a, a presentation from the staff or needed debate um, by the council. And another reason is just because the council wants it, uh, some council member wants it to be discussed in front of the public so that people will be aware of it. Um, and uh, you know that might be something like uh, an oil and gas regulation, the closing down, the capping of a well or something that's within the city limits that uh, there's a lot of public interest in, uh, but there's not really much to be decided, so there won't be much debate, but you pull it off the consent agenda and talk about it a little bit just to make everybody aware. Um, and then the remaining ordinances that didn't get pulled off the consent agenda just go through to the next step in a following meeting without any discussion at this <coughs> level. And what's passed then are considered again at the next regular session. Second reading, um, ordinances are passed on the first passed on the first reading are considered at a second reading, and at a second reading, the council first has the opportunity to discuss each ordinance, and then the mayor opens a public hearing, and uh, anybody and has the right to speak for three minutes about the ordinance, only about the ordinance. And unlike typical public invited to be heard, uh, you don't have to live in Longmont or work for the city to speak. You can be any interested party at all. So for example, a Weld County Commissioner might come, or um, somebody from New York who thinks smart meters are gonna kill us all might come, and they're still allowed to speak. Um, and that has, both of those things have happened, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then the hearing is closed when everyone who wishes to speak has done so. And at that point, the council again has another, another round of, of being able to speak on the, on the subject for debate. And the council may take a number of actions at that point. The council may postpone discussion of the ordinance pending something else happening. Um, they may table it, which is essentially killing it. Um, they may in, ask for amendments um, or they may vote on the proposed ordinance and pass it. So an ordinance that passes second reading is headed, hi Ronnie. An ordinance that passes on second reading is headed to the city code. It, uh, it generally, it becomes law 30 days after the second reading, but uh, there are certain ordinances where the council may 
have a date certain. If it's an emergency, it may go into effect almost immediately. And then if it is, if it's for something to go on the next election, uh, obviously it doesn't go into effect until you know the election, whatever that date would be. Um, but those are the main reasons why it wouldn't just be on that 30 days following um, cycle. And this process is specified by state law. So um, any home rule municipality has to follow this basic procedure. Um, what happens when the council changes its mind? Come on, there you go. Um, a decision by the council may be reversed only, in, and that's a final decision, the second reading vote, um, can be reversed only in the first regular session after the final vote is taken. And the only people who can move for reconsidering an ordinance is someone who voted with the majority. So if it was three to four, or four to three to pass this ordinance, then only one of the yay voters can make a motion to reconsider. And that essentially means, well, I think the council was wrong and I have something else to say. Um, and uh, what that does is it, is it just undoes that, that last vote and puts the, the state of play into where it was before that second reading motion was, was voted on. That means that the replacement motion could actually be something different. You know, so it could be, I move this as it was originally presented without the amendments that happened along the way. Or I move that we table this and, and not discuss it anymore and not, not pass it on. Um, and a new vote is taken and that's, that's what the council does. You know, that's the, the final decision of the council. We can't do that more than once. Um, so yeah, it's a, the same motion or a different one um, may be considered. Uh, that's happened a few times um, in my memory, uh, where you know, usually the I mean the last time it happened uh, was about um, a, a little the annexation of an of an enclave, and one council member who had just been elected voted no because she thought. Uh, that we needed to make them fix, uh, bring the, the, the piece of land up to code before we could annex them. And actually the opposite was true. We can't make them do anything about the code until they're annexed. So um, she made a motion to reconsider once she understood the mistake and that then we voted the proper way and everything was fine. Um, and that's really what it's for. You know, because nobody's perfect and, and everybody gets things mixed up once in a while. And so uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's an opportunity to, to change your mind. Otherwise, um, once the council has voted on it, the same exact subject cannot really be considered until a new council has been elected. Now that doesn't mean that everybody is new but it means there has been a municipal election and, and, um, and so after the election, even if it's all the same people, uh, then the clock is sort of reset and you can take up subjects uh, and, and mm -hmm. handle them differently. Um, it doesn't happen very often, but I can think of at least once where it has. Do you have a question, David? No. Oh, okay. No, I was just looking confused. <laughs> well, if you're confused, but you have a question no. whether you say it or not. Um, okay. Resolutions. A resolution is a statement of policy, usually, um, and uh, they only have a first reading, whether they are discussed or not. Um, and so they show up on the consent agenda, and if they just get passed with the consent agenda, then there's never any public discussion, but the resolution goes into, becomes city policy anyway. Um, they only require one vote, obviously, and a resolution that passes goes into effect immediately, even if it's not debated. Now, 
the resolutions that have a big effect on policy usually are pulled off the consent agenda and there usually is a presentation and a discussion about it. The most recent two um, important resolutions have been the Sustainable Aviation Resolution uh, and Vision Zero. And, and um, Sustainable Aviation has a moderate amount of impacts on, on policy. You know, it, it puts the city on track to um, providing uh, sustainable aviation fuel and uh, solar plus battery on hangars and all that kind of stuff um, that will eventually that that determines how things become law or what laws the city, the city brings forward. But they don't all happen by inference. You know, they they all have to um, they all have to be still worked out by the city staff as to how each supporting ordinance would happen. But it, it means that the council doesn't have to direct the staff on each and every little thing about making the airport more sustainable. If they understand that that's a mission and they have to do it. Um, so Vision Zero, even more so. Uh, Vision Zero sets the goal of achieving zero traffic deaths. Um, that's really hard. And so there's typically not an end date associated with it. But what it does do is just like sustainable aviation, it, uh, it dictates what ordinances the city passed. So soon we will hear um, if it even needs to be an ordinance, what we'll, we'll, we'll see. In fact, I see this in my neighborhood right now that uh, the streets are going from 25 miles an hour to 20 miles an hour. And it, on the streets where it has, uh, um, the speed limit has been lowered, they've put out those little flashy uh, speed monitors so that you can see that, oh, you're going 25, but it's really 20, folks. And I expect that what will happen is that without an ordinance at all, because the city operations has the, um, power to set speed limits on different streets. It doesn't require council action to do that um, because Vision Zero is a well-documented strategy for lowering traffic deaths. The city can just, you know, go neighborhood by neighborhood, change the speed limits, deploy the um, speed monitors and so on, and, and you know, put that policy into effect. And as I said, that's, that's happening in my neighborhood right now. So a resolution can be extremely powerful, you know, or it can be something, you know, almost like a proclamation that allows you to just acknowledge, um, you know, that it's test your basement for ozone leak or something like that. Yes, David? I don't want to go too far here, but under item two, they form, mm -hmm. uh, but they form a permanent direction to the staff. Okay, so. If this board recommended a resolution to the city council and the city council adopted this resolution and the resolution was to the senior center staff to give priority of service to people with red hair and green shoes, they would have to, they're basically directed to do that? Yeah, well, the council wouldn't pass that particular ordinance. No, but I mean, um. something more reasonable. <laughs> you know, like, uh, but, uh, at but least it would have the force of a... Uh, but yeah, it, it would it would be um, yeah it would be a city, it would become a city policy. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Uh, I mean, a more reasonable one would be uh, to make sure that there are no um, barrier barriers in the vicinity of the senior center to uh, mobility challenged patrons. Yes. Yeah, right. You yeah. know, because mm -hmm. uh, there might be a you know we there might be two or three tripping hazards around here, and there probably are if we went and looked for them. And so that would mean you know that doesn't need to be a law. Yeah. But what it would do is is bring fixing that to the attention of the engineering staff and make them prioritize it. So that's how a, a resolution can be effective. So I would think, I don't want to belabor the point, but um, if the staff agreed with a certain procedure like you would just describe, uh, that would make it a more powerful resolution. Otherwise, you'd run the risk, I suppose, of the city council saying, what does the staff think about it? 
Yeah, well, yeah, there, there, the city council would, if, if it, if it was resource heavy, you know, so like fixing oh, yeah. two yeah. or three en entrances to the senior right. center probably doesn't suck up enough resources that it would ruin, uh, you know, the whole engineering operation for the whole city. Right. Um, but if it's something like, you know, we recently, because not because of a resolution, but because of uh, a change in ADA regulations, I think, we had to replace the ramp entrances at corners all over the city. Mm -hmm. Some of them had only been in place for a year or two. Uh, and that was a big deal. And so if a resolution was going to have that sweeping an impact, then there would be a council discussion about it and the um, staff would put together a presentation about what the impact of it was and it'd be a whole big McGill and the council might you know pass it or not pass it you know something like eliminating three trip hazards on the at the senior center probably would not get that much attention and in fact it might go through on the consent agenda um, but and that's kind of that's a, a good example, I think, of the range of impact that a resolution can have. Okay, thank you. Sure. You got about five minutes. <laughs> and I'm done, so I'm not <laughs> <laughs> five minutes yeah. for Q and A. Did that make sense? And was that yes. what you were looking for? Yeah, that was very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, um, Marcia, How many items would there normally be on the consent agenda? Oh, it varies from two or three to about twenty. Five. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I, it, it, it varies a lot. Um, uh, what tends to happen is that the things get backed up, like now, like during budget season, and there aren't very many. Um, and then at some point, there'll be a horrendous meeting where they're, they're cleaning house because now they need ordinances in support of whatever's going to be in the next year's budget. Um, so there'll be a couple of really long consent agendas. How long does it, <clears throat> excuse me, how long does this process take? Let's say, for example, this board makes a recommending regarding a resolution, and I suppose it goes to Ronnie to submit to the city clerk. Ronnie they can submit, submit it or to, I can to, submit to, it. For your agenda, the city council's agenda. Yeah. Takes the form of a resolution. You act on it or you don't. Mm -hmm. And let's say it's adopted. How long does that process take from the time the board uh, would recommend the resolution? Well, the resolution becomes policy immediately, um, but because it's just direction to the staff, unless the resolution is something that contains a date certain, it just means it goes into the queue. So you know, we didn't expect the sustainable uh, aviation resolution to do anything. Yeah at first, because the city's doing all, all these long-term negotiations about airport research sources. But in fact, uh, the, it, it turned out when the staff looked at what it said that there were immediate things um, like uh, changes in, in the airport lease that, that needed to happen. Um, and uh, you know the fuel tanks at the airport were due for replacement. And, and that the sustainable aviation resolution means that it meant that there needed to be some redesign because uh, sustainable aviation fuel uh, requires uh, different specs for the for the underground tanks for mm. fuel. Jeff, <clears throat> so I heard your question a little bit different than what Marsha. So if you all took a vote today and wanted to have something go to council depending on what the topic is, it could take anywhere from two to four weeks to get to the point where it's before city council. Because there are certain things that we as staff have to do to get something on the agenda. And then if it's a resolution, it requires legal to help with that as well. And legal right now has a time frame of two to four weeks uh, notice before they can work on it. So not sure if that's what you were asking, yeah. but taking that a different way. Yes, yeah, that is that is true. And that's related to something else that I didn't say, uh, which is, you know, I, I did say that uh, an amendment, 
amendments could be discussed at either first reading or second reading. Um, typically a second, amend, uh, a second reading amendment, which happens and then you vote on it and it either passes or fails, is really simple. You know, so you could do something like change a, a six weeks into effect time to an eight weeks or 90 days for that matter. Um, and it wouldn't necessarily change how well formed the language of the ordinance is, so you could just make that amendment in real time. But if an ordinance is amended on first reading, then it comes into what Jeff says. The council doesn't have the skills mm -hmm. to actually write law and have it be well formed and proper. So we give direction about the sense of it, what should happen, and then and, and then what we would be doing instead of voting on the resolution was we would instruct the staff to come back with, with the same ordinance but with different provisions, you know, the, essentially the same ordinance but with different provisions. Um, and then we'd have to have another first reading, right, because it's not the same anymore. Um, so that's the, the, the staff, the, the council really cannot uh, draft law because it's special skills. So what happens in the drafting of an ordinance is first a subject matter expert, like the parks biologist, in the case of the infamous prairie dog law, you know, um, has to mostly draft it and do a whole bunch of research search and stuff. And then it goes to legal and, and legal has to figure out not only is the language proper, but also does it violate any state laws, which the first draft yeah. of the Prairie Dog Ordinance actually did. Um, so uh, it's, it is a complicated process and depending on how complicated the well, ordinance this, is. This, this helps a lot, Jeff. The, so the, the other thing I would like to, I guess, throw out there is that Ronnie as the manager of senior services is delegated certain authority to make decisions at the senior center. So let's let's use the example that Marsha uh, referred to uh, as far as the trip hazards. That's a great one because Arlene and I actually talked about that uh, last, last month and um, I have an update for you before we leave today. But some of those things really don't have to go to city council. We as staff are expected to what I'm going to say is do the right thing and make repairs in a timely manner. Things would, in that situation, would only go to city council as if senior services was responsible for paying for that and they didn't really have the resources, then we would approach city council to see if they would give us the, the funds to, to make that uh, um, change. So yeah. not everything would have to go to city council but if you want to affect change, like in your next uh, uh, agenda item with the, your annual report, a lot of those things would take at least upper city leadership or city council to make happen. Right, so, and, and that one thing about the trip hazard could run the whole gamut. So suppose that the trip hazards were just a couple of slabs of sidewalks that had risen or fallen, so there was an inch or two of, of difference at the, at the expansion crack, um, then, then Ronnie could just put in a work order, right? Mm -hmm. And, and then you might, you might want to make it go to the council if that kept getting prioritized down and it was eight months later and it still wasn't fixed. Um, and, and, and so you could, it, one thing is it's a, it's a mechanism to escalate something or to get new appropriations. The other thing is, you know, if, if uh, at the other end of that spectrum, if we had a door that was being used that was too narrow for a large person's walker or wheelchair, then that's a big expensive thing that you probably can't do with just a work order. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that, I, uh, uh, Art. I want to clarify something myself. Dave, Wrote to send something or sending something to the city council in reference to our priority, mm -hmm. and you know talked about the increase of staff. At this point, you folks look at it and then it's kind of put in the uh, 
the proposed budget for next year and the possibility mm -hmm. is that pretty much the way yeah and that is neither that that's just part of the budgeting process so it's neither an ordinance nor a resolution right. council doesn't see that stuff until, until the end then. of the project okay. the budgeting okay. process so i didn't know if you all got a copy of it with all that no we did because you don't have enough to do so, so that, yeah. i think that's why it's important we have input to Harry early in the process are you, are you agreeing? Or? Well, and that really is the process that we go through. So each department formulates right. their budgets. Right. Um, we actually um, then will run them through our uh, assistant city manager for external services because she oversees um, several departments. So Jeff's, um, our department. Uh, and then at that point, we have um, budget hearings with our CFO. Um, and Harold and uh, a, a team of support, uh, our budget manager uh, from finance. Um, and then we uh, talk about our, our budget um, asks. So Ronnie would talk about his budget asks, talk about the involvement that the advisory board had, um, present data. Mm -hmm. uh, and then at that point, it really is Harold, our city man, or Harold, um, our CFO, and our budget manager that look at, at balancing that budget um, for the revenue that we have, and then that's when city council uh, will see right. the beginning right. in September. But as far as a single person, Harold is probably the main, other than our own internal staff, we would want to talk to them. It seems to me Harold would be a critical person in the overall process, even though in you have the overall process, level. he decides what goes in front of the right. city council. Right. Yeah, with, with staff input. Okay, I don't want to belabor it. All right. And public input. Right. You know, I okay. mean, a, lot of, a lot, you can get stuff on city council by marshalling the public and, you know, week after week having people talk. Right. Um, and that's actually quite effective. So. Okay, uh, we're about two minutes past our under the time. Uh, approval of the annual, okay. thank you, Marshall, by the way. Right. Okay, moving along on time. Mm, approval of the annual report. I left uh, five minutes for that on the assumption that there wouldn't be a whole lot of discussion. I don't know. Uh, we sent out another copy of the annual report, the proposed the draft annual report. And uh, what we did last year was just uh, we signed off on it and uh, sent it, to, uh, Ronnie sent it forward to the city council. And that's, that's kind of what prompted this whole discussion that we had before. So, I guess my question to the group at this point is, uh, what do you want to do with that annual report? Our lady. So, I've been looking at this, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> I have just, just a couple of um, suggestions. Okay. I know that last time you mentioned that somebody had said the first paragraph is too wordy. Yep. We need to cut it down. You I totally agree with that. Okay. I think we can get it down to one sentence. If I'm understanding this correctly, and I may not be, it seems to me that what our main concern is that we want a couple of resource staff. And then the housing and the transportation are, um, we like this idea, how about this? You know, okay. Um, so if that's the case, I think staffing information should be put up right underneath that as the number one thing for them to see. I don't even know if they're going to read the thing. You said they may not read it. But if we put staffing up there, that's our number one concern. And then, because I'm kind of strange about being succinct, it seems to me that we could take all of them and bullet them. So under housing, well, I'll take transportation because I'm supposed to talk about that. Transportation, it would be this um, with this suggestion, pull it to this with this suggestion, which makes it stand out a little bit differently than if you're reading it as a paragraph. Um, those are my those are my thoughts, and it's certainly open to anybody else. Good, good thoughts. Uh, Lonnie, I think you have your hand up. I would agree definitely with Arlene. I mean, we can we can cut this down, and um, you know, I'm from the. From the school, but if you're going to send somebody a letter, you better make it as short as possible because that's going to be more conducive to them reading it. Um, so I would definitely reword this so that the first paragraph was shorter. Okay. Bullet points are terrific. I always find that it's easier to look at things when they're bulleted. 
because then you can go, you can walk right through it. And you tend, when, when I use bullets, I tend to make things shorter. <laughs> and I would also say all of our names should be on the uh, Sincerely. To be signed with all of our names because I really want people to realize that we have a really robust board and a really active board. Mm -hmm. And I want them to know how many people are behind this and how many people are doing the work of, you know, building up this board. So, yeah, I think it would be a good suggestion under David's name to put everybody else who's on the board. And if we shorten the letter, we'll have the room to do it. Yeah. I agree. Just, just a comment. We decide we had the same discussion last year, and we decided just on one signature. That was an option. Either way is fine. I think I agree with you. Okay. Just makes us look like we're all behind it. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Good idea. Should it be a motion? Sheila, we're not done just, yet. I'm, re I'm really agreeing with everybody that's spoken. I mean, the content is perfect. <coughs> the presentation needs to be changed so that. Refer. Yes, yeah. so that city council members who have lots to read and do will will read it. So, but per, but content, excellent. Okay, uh, Bonnie again. And the one other thing that I I saw, and it's what we've been saying, is there's a lot of information in here that we have to assume the city council already knows. You know, like. You know, are based on months of board discussion and data from the senior center. That's kind of the procedure that everybody would use, right? Yeah. So you're that saying that shouldn't so be I'm in just, there? Or? Just saying because we can shorten it, we can probably shorten it somewhat because some of these things that you state are kind of known by the city council. They right. don't, you know, they don't need it explained out to them. So. Okay. If that makes sense. Oh, and I just want to make a disclaimer. So, I so you're saying that should be deleted. That that part should be deleted. Is that right? Um, I, I'm, it should be shortened. Um, shortened. Okay. And I can sit down and do that with you if you want. Yeah, I can yeah. do that too. Okay. Yeah, all right. We can get a couple of people. Okay. And I just want to mm -hmm. say, this weekend I took my tooth and I had I dropped it off at my dentist's office. And I eight o'clock this morning at the dentist, so I'll be dentureless for a week. So if you can't hear me, please let me know. You look cute that way, Lauren. Oh, you think so? <laughs> I've been walking around like trying to puff out my mouth so I don't look like I'm missing teeth. But anyway. All right. Other comments? I agree with everything. Yeah, that's fine. I just, is this something, okay, so I want to go back to last night when I was watching the council. And I saw the presentation by the library board. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be the same thing? Because if it is, the thing that I got out of the presentation last night was that the lady who presented was not, had not gone over the information ahead of time. It just sort of mm -hmm. seemed like that, the way that she was going through it. If we're gonna to present to city council, it needs to be really rehearsed. Yeah, I mean. So in Jane's defense, I'll just say that at one o'clock yesterday, she, she got it. She got it yeah. because the person that was going to be there was sick, so she stepped up. Mm -hmm. I, and I thought for last minute, she did a, a pretty good job. I think the one thing that, if if anybody else watched that, is that when you do, if you're going to do a PowerPoint, your font has to be large enough mm -hmm. to be able to to, to read and. And that was the only comment I had made to the library prior to it, and they ignored me. And mm -hmm. after it was all done, they said, yeah, you were right. So, yeah, so because she- big, big font. She had trouble reading it, yeah. and there's no way you could see it if you're watching it from, from TV. Yeah. 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 Well, what do you think about making a presentation of some kind? We don't have to do that. We talked about it. I got my opinion, but I'd like to hear from everybody else. I think we need to do it next year. Anybody? What's your opinion? Huh? My opinion? Yes, sir. My opinion is that uh, my impression from Harold is well, I'm very impressed with Harold as a person. He knows everything. You know? um, <laughs> You know, he, he was so aware of everything we talked about. Mm -hmm. 
And I just don't know if we have enough punch to make a presentation is what I'm trying to say. We can do it, and that probably wouldn't hurt. But, uh, and it's, I, I agree with you, I think it really has to be focused on certain items. The, the housing thing was, was too general. Uh, as far as staffing is concerned, they know that already. You know, everybody's been ragging on Harold for who knows how long on staff, so that's, that's nothing new. So I'm a little reluctant to do that right now. What I would rather do, that's also interested in the resolution, is we've got a couple of subjects coming up, I think, that could be really more powerful than something like this, is uh, uh, John. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but he has a proposal on um, food insecurity of seniors. I think it's just a wonderful idea. And then elder abuse has come up, and we've already got the three others we've been working on. I think I'd rather see. My opinion is that we'd probably be more effective if we just put more of a niche issue mm -hmm. and go up and hammer them with that single issue through a resolution. And I don't know when this would get implemented, you said it could be implemented yeah, in three or four weeks. So anyway, that's what I think. But, you know, if we want to make a presentation, we can certainly do that. Um, I yes. have a couple remarks. Yep. One is a presentation is the way of, of, of ensuring that the council reads your annual report because you're reading it to them or you know, presenting it to them in briefer form. Um, the other thing is that if you have a need case, make it. It does not have to be point for point, bullet for bullet, the same thing as your annual report. So, for example, if, if I were doing it, I'd have the annual report more or less like you have with the, uh, you know, the good comments that we have about organization. Um, but then talk about those, those two um, resource specialists that are being requested and tell some stories about the need, you know, and just because the council doesn't know those things. And the other thing is the council may know those things and have other things higher on their agenda that they would rather have more money spent or more attention given to something else, you know, including the exact same thing for youth programming. Um, you know, so, in, if you want to make your case, make a, make an emotional case, make something that is going to resonate with the public who is watching, um, and then submit the report. That's another thing that you can do. We, do we have time for another month, or is it if we, let's say we rework the letter, come up with some talking points, you know, would it be too late after the Jeff month? would be the person who understands that better. So the we could get on the agenda ahead of time, I suppose. That if you want to impact the budget sooner than later, uh, Ronnie, Christina, and I have until May 31st to submit um, our information. Um, if you want to support what is being put in there, I would say no later than mid June. Would, would you agree? Yeah, because then, or, yeah, even third week in June, because yeah. we usually have that meeting with our CFO and Harold um, right after the fourth. Yeah. So then July. decisions are starting to be made uh, after the fourth of July. So we can we can set up a proposal for mid June, right? Right. I mean, and presentation. So that so Marsha, I'm going to ask you a question when. When the library was came that um, Susie um, yeah had made a recommendation to council, do we have to do it that way, or can can we just put it on the agenda that to come in, come before you? You can um, you can uh, two people control the agenda, right? right? It's Harold and the mayor, right? And either of them can put anything on the, on the agenda that they want. Also, a council member can put things on the agenda by motion, 
but uh, you have to, the council has to vote. You know, so two of us last night moved to put things on the agenda and were defeated. Um, we couldn't even get a second for either one. Um, so those are the three ways something goes on the agenda. But if you ask Harold or Joan about something simple like this, you know, something that, well, the senior advisory board would like to present before the budget decisions start being made, then that's probably, she'll just say yes. And she so I, I think we they put it in there, Christina. And yeah. have, we have our agenda meeting yeah. every Thursday, so yeah. um, we'll get together, Ronnie, and find a good, a good time to do it. Then you can report back what that target date is. Yeah. And, and it would certainly be after your June meeting. Mm -hmm. So anything you wanted to finalize before then, we could, we could do that. I feel uncomfortable doing it without further review. At our June meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. I'd rather make the changes we talked about and brainstorm a little bit how we're going to present those. And we still have time. Right, but the June meeting is really early in June, so yeah. Well, fine. when is our, is it the 5th of June? Um, our next meeting? Yeah. That would be the 5th. The 5th? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty early. Ar Arlene, did you want to say something? Well, as far as, as getting up there and presenting the annual report, I would like to see us be much more polished and be really ready and good. I and maybe agree. that means we do it next year. I don't know. But if I'm understanding correctly where we're at, the thing that we're really interested in is getting some additional resource people. So I don't, I don't know about a resolution, but what kind of of information or feedback does the council look at when actual people from the public come up for their three minutes and say I'm from the advisory board and these are this is our recommendation based on blah 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 and you can do that pretty succinctly in three minutes if we had you know one or two or even I mean all seven of us who knows um, would that have an impact at least it would say to the council <clears throat> Here's the concern, here's what we're asking for, and here's the reasons why. Well, Arlene, I go back to my previous point, which is if you're gonna if you're gonna do public and do it through public invited to be heard, tell the stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so you can do yeah. say so and so needed this and they had to wait three weeks for an appointment. Mm -hmm. Um Ronnie, you know, I, I'm sure you could come up with some heart rending stories. <laughs> I'm serious. You could. Yeah. Throw those in. So, so yes. are we looking at a presentation or are we looking at public invited to be? You don't have to choose. No? No. You can, anybody can speak at public invited to be heard. Right, right. but I didn't right. know if you had more time if you had a presentation. Well, no, you, yeah, but you don't have to choose. So you can request the presentation. You should limit that to 15 minutes or less. Okay. But that's okay. a lot more time than public invited to be heard. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get through your bullet points, put that in the presentation yeah. and then have some people come yeah, to gotcha. public and tell the stories. Gotcha. Okay, so let's, see if I, let's see if I understand what I'm hearing here. Oh, okay. Ann? Uh, being new on the board, yes. my question is, do we present every year to the city council no. our annual report? We haven't. You I don't submitted. know when it's been. You submit it, but don't. Present. Yeah, this is kind of new territory, at least to, for this board. Oh, okay. Thank you. I don't know. The, the, there's never been a presentation of every call. Yeah, uh, Michelle, did, Michelle did once or twice. Really? Okay. Yeah. There's actually, I think, a good portion of us that haven't even been on here in years. So, yeah. 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 Uh, we're new. Yeah. Okay. One, one more thing. Okay, Lonnie. Just the technicality. And I'm, I'm probably the one that perpetuated this. I've been calling this board Senior Citizens Advisory Board. Okay. It is not. It is Senior Services Advisory Board, correct? Oh. I think it's Senior uh, Citizens. Citizens. Uh, senior citizens. It yeah. is, because yeah. I looked it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, because I've, I've seen both you. I've seen both rounds, so okay. I didn't know if I was perpetuating the wrong one. <laughs> well, I learned something every day. All right. Okay, go ahead. Okay, let me go back. Um, <clears throat> am I understanding that most of us would be comfortable with putting this on the agenda next month, which would be the 5th of June, 
and we'll have a revised letter incorporating the suggestions that were made and we'll come up with some way to polish our presentation and then we'll we'll, we'll aim for mid-June to have a presentation to the City Council, get our report on the agenda for mid-June. Is that, the first, is that it? The first regular session in June would be the second Tuesday, so June 11th. June 11th, okay, that's enough time. And I'll time. take a look at the agenda and see. That's a week, yeah. So okay. we could do either one, right? I mean, second or fourth, yeah. That you know of right now. Okay. okay. I don't, I don't know so we're shooting for June, we're shooting for June 11th? That's okay. the way I understand. Okay. What is, okay. Somebody make a motion on how we want to do this. Lonnie? I make a motion that we table the letter until the June meeting. And do I have to put the, we ask to be put on the agenda? No? Okay. Yeah, put, make the motion the way you want. Okay. Just table the letter till the June meeting for corrections. Okay. Does that work? You want to add anything about mid June approximately to be followed by a presentation to City Council without a date? I don't think we have to put that yet. Okay. Does that seem to be good enough? Yeah. Good. Okay. If you agree, if you agree with that, somebody make a second. Second. Uh, Eric makes a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, motion carries. And yes. just FYI, um, the two regular sessions in June are the 11th or the 25th. The 25th might be late for this process. I don't know. Yeah, okay. All right, moving on. Um, under new business, future challenges. I was going to give a little background there. We have approximately, it's 11 o'clock, about, 40, about 40, 45 minutes for that, and then 20 minutes for reports. And then, so we got just enough time. Uh, but I thought it would be good, mostly for the new members, and uh, to explain how we did this last year. And uh, about this time last year, maybe a little bit earlier, uh, we decided that we were going to focus on three areas and it was housing, transportation, and outreach. And we had two people that uh, volunteered. Uh, I didn't uh, appoint anybody, by the way. It was, they were all volunteers. And uh, we decided to do it as a working group. And I did that after consultation with the city, and I did that again this year. And a working group is probably the way to go. It's up to two people to avoid the requirement that we have to go through as a committee to establish a committee. Then on top of that, you have, to, you have to post your agenda before the meeting. So that's what we decided last year, was just go with two, two groups, two person groups. We don't have to do the same thing. I'm just saying that's what we did last year. So in housing, we had Lonnie and uh, Sheila. Transportation was Arlene. And outreach was Art and Beth. Uh, and my yes, then. Well, not right, last, not last, last year. year. Oh, for last year. Yeah, last year. So that's how we structured it last year to uh, try to make some sort of progress. And the target was to meet with Harold uh, in March. I think it was in February, right? I forget. Anyway, early in the year with Harold. So we could have our thoughts together as far as the annual plan is concerned and communicate what we wanted to Harold. And then at that point, we would decide whether or not we were going to make a presentation to the city council. And that's where we are right now. So that's kind of the process that we followed last year. Um, and that, of course, was determined by the goal of the ordinance, which is to make recommendations to city council. That's why we did all of this. Um, I, I will explain a couple of things here, just another minute. And that is, 
we missed our December meeting, which was a big mistake on my part. I, I canceled the December meeting. I thought it was a good idea. Some of those things I thought it was a good idea at the time. Anyway, it was not a good idea because we got behind. And so the last two, three meetings got a little frantic, trying to cram a lot of stuff in to meet the goals that we were talking about. And so that's why that happened. So uh, that's just background. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to throw it open to discussion now as to what you think is important as far as this board focusing on this <coughs> next year. I think a lot of people have got a lot of ideas and I would propose that maybe, well, we have at least uh, John Higgins, he's got a very good proposal in my opinion that he wants to present uh, next time. So I would think that most of the, of the topics we propose today, maybe we finalize, if we want to finalize them uh, next time, we can have one or two people per topic if that's the way you wanted it. Anyway, I've said enough. What do we do next year? Oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I was um, looking aimlessly at my cup of coffee. It's okay. <laughs> um, we talked about this a little, and we really want to know what everybody's interest is. Like, you came to the board with an idea of something in particular that you would like to look into, and we want to know what that is because we want to be able to get people, find out what your interest is and then see what we can do about making it an area of interest and that you could start to look into. Um, Sheila and I did housing and we got a lot of information. Right now, it looks like housing is kind of even. We've given you a lot of information. There's not a lot of continuation going on. There's not a lot of things to report. So we will be, at least I will be, I don't know, Sheila, I think she feels the same way we'd be able to get involved in something else too and just give updates on housing. Something like our liens is transportation and there's a lot going on. There's a lot of, there's continuation of things going on. So she may say, I'm just gonna continue with transportation and give you continued updates on, on the, you know, the microtransit and all that that's, that's involved. But we really just wanna find out who's interested in what and who has an idea of something they want to take on as an area of interest. I'm particularly interested in food insecurity. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. That was a good one. That's John brought that up and I thought okay, well, I'll, I'll take a good one. It is, I think it's a growing problem in uh, food, not just in the city, but nationwide. And it's not an issue that I, or even this board, can come to a solution for, but to at least have some data behind a presentation or a sharing of knowledge. And I would like to address that in the next, in the coming months. I can uh, continue to give updates on transportation. A um, couple of things. I, I did mention elder abuse. I think that is something that would be interesting to hear um, information about. But one of the things, Dave, that you keep talking about, and I'm, I'm fully in agreement with this, data, um, data from, from the senior center, because if we are going to start saying, um, we need more resource people, we need more recreation people, we need the building you know, remodeled or something like that, I think we've got to have data to back that up. Um, I don't know what the council now, but when Waters used to be on the council, everything had to be data. Do you have data to back that up? And I think that's that's kind of kind of important. Do you have a research person on your staff? There used to be one, I thought. Oh, <laughs> you are okay. Um, but with that, I mean, when these things come about, I do present those at, at these board meetings, the data. But outside of that, if we're looking at anything in particular, I can help support support. And, I, and I might before. add that with this, with the restructure that we went through, um, there was a new department that was created um, that's strategic integration. And so that's really where um, our data people live. And we work really closely with um, the manager of that division, uh, Lynn Yarmy. So um, Ronnie 
has access um, to help with um, with data, with evaluation. Um, they've done a lot of work um, compiling youth data um, and creating, helping create dashboards and those kinds of things. So I think that's something that we could work with that department on. Office of Strategic based Integration. On strategic integration. integration. So based on feedback from us or based on that really would come from from Ronnie as a as a work as a work item and so you know I, I think as an outcome of these meetings if you're looking at particular data on um, on use in the facility and how to how to um, best um, provide that information they really are are experts in that in that area and so if if there's a specific um, you know a specific uh, um, item that comes up I think it really it is a discussion of, um, of is that within the scope of what senior services can do because it can get really big really fast right and so I think that there there's a balance are we um, are we, for example, senior services in um, charge of um, investigating uh, abuse, elder abuse, and and what what does that look like? And, and I'd say that it's probably um, more of a of a conversation with some of our partners in the community. So I think maybe that discussion might need to be had here. So how, what's our connection with um, with uh, the, the county's human services or the Department of Human Services and, and what's that link and what is the data that they're seeing. I, I think that that it starts it starts there um, and then it can get it can get bigger and, and you know we can pull in other internal city partners as well. Does, does that help? And and I don't disagree with you on that. In fact that's that's really kind of the way I'm thinking mm -hmm. is it, so I said mention elder abuse. Well I'm sure that we we could get information from the police, we could get information from Boulder County, we could get information you know, from different places. Absolutely. And I think what we need is, if we're going to look at something like that, or even get information on it, we need several people, maybe at a time, to come in and say, here's what, you're, here's what we're looking at, here's what, you know, that type of thing. But backing up to data, so if I were to say, I would like to know exactly how many people unduplicated attend the senior center, so that means if I come here, um, I'm one person. But if I come here for three different yeah. programs, I'm still one person. Still one person yeah. Is there a way that that particular thing can get can go that remote, you know, into it and say we have this many unduplicated? Then you can go with duplicated. Okay, so I came to three programs. Great. You know that gives you a totally different number. And of course your door count. It's a whole different number. That's a whole different thing. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think that's the struggle, right? And that's really the struggle that we all face in um, in public um, public facilities is that it's hard to get to that unduplicated mm -hmm. number. Right. So that, you know, I've been with the city for 25 years and we've always struggled with how do we get that unduplicated number. Um, I think that, you know, the, the advantage that we have now is we have some technology that we haven't ever had before. Um, you know, we're looking at some um, some ways to do client um, records management a little easier. Um, I don't know what will will come out of that, but to that specific point, I, I think it's something we could explore. But it's something that we've struggled with for a really long time. And so, what makes that challenging is we offer so many different things right here at our center. What I mean by that is we have our door count will catch people. Um, oh, yes, total guests, right? They may not be coming for programs, drop in or paid programs or day trips. They may be going to just meals and meals. Right? Mm -hmm. right. um, programs we have to register for, so that is 100% concrete, accurate data, right? You can pull unduplicated uh, individuals from, from, from that information. Uh, one thing we're working to clean up is, is our drop-ins. Right now we have people who aren't going on our day trips, are not part of our registered programs, not utilizing meals and wills, they're coming for things like table tennis, um, uh, table tennis, the billiard rooms. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at a way to how do we capture that data. And so that's something we're currently working on right now. Amy, uh, our, our program supervisor, recreation program supervisor specifically, is working with um, with our, 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 our volunteer uh, facilitators for these drop-in programs. 
to identify a way to 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 register basically on the spot is that mm -hmm. we're having computers in in, in these spaces um, um, to where they log into um, sign up genius and just plug their information in the day of they have to sign up in advance um, and even though there's no cost we have to sign up on sign up genius in advance to attend this program so we at least have a record of who's who, who's participating we're ironing that out some of those details um, right now and i will add really quickly that you know ronnie listed off several different data um, sources and, and what we have done in the past whether it's to council or to our city manager um, what we have done in other areas is really provide um, these different data points to help build that picture and so while we don't have the exact number of unduplicated clients um, or, or patrons what we can say is these many people you know had uh, resource visits these many people this was the total visits to the to the senior center and, and what that does is in in general really paint a picture of how much work um, is happening at the at the senior center how many opportunities are, are having and I think at the end of the day that really is our goal right is to be able to to paint that picture um, and give people the, the the picture of of the total operations of the youth center of the of the senior center excuse me of the senior center um, um, even if we don't have that undeniable <clears throat> Right, so to really hi highlight and identify who is using our facility right. or what and at what capacity. So mm -hmm. there's different numbers, but each of those numbers capture yeah. different things. It's a good picture. Right? Yeah, and I understand all of that, and I can understand the different things, and, and I think that that's important. But I, is there a way to have people have some sort of a card that when they come in, they just scan it on the computer, and it automatically goes in, and, and then, of course, that will will spread out across the, the line. And so if my number's 15536, mm -hmm. it's gonna show that I was here this many times, but the computer will be able to say this many people came. So if we have, and I don't, I don't know this, it's just a number I'm throwing out. If we have 300 unduplicated people that come to this uh, center on a regular basis, how do we reach those other people that aren't coming? And we don't know that because we don't know how many people are coming? So that's something we discussed um, um, at, on a lower level. We, we had discussions with some of our staff, some of our, our regular patrons, um, some of our, um, just some of those regulars, just kind of collect some feedback. Like if we were to move to that sort of system, um, it wasn't well received uh, because they felt to take, it took away, uh, the, 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 the feedback I got, it, it took away from, um, how welcoming we are meaning we are open to everybody right and of course we everyone comes for different things but what that means is in order to come to access you know i, I enjoy this is feedback i got right i enjoy walking in with my friends some's going to uh, register programs some are just going directly to wheels of wheels and i'm going to one of their free drop-in programs uh, they felt it took away from 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 that, that connection to the facility specifically, and it became more, um, uh, one, one thing I heard was like a Costco. You have to scan your, you can't check your ID before you walk in to access the amenities, right? And so they just felt that it take away from um, the, that, that personal connection to our facility. Uh, and and um, from there, we decided to not to, to not move forward with, with that. And how do, we, how do we get around that? Again, we have our registered programs, we have our meals on wheels because you know they're tracking the data there, right? Um, we have our door counter, and then that's when we decide to implement, keep that same fill, identify that plan to um, um, sign up, sign up for the drop-in programs. So. so the answer is we're not going to do unduplicated counts at this time. At this time, well, probably. Right. Is never. that something we can look at unpacking time. down the road? Absolutely. Uh, but you know, again, from the information I got, conversations we had, feedback we received, it was, it was another thing. It seems like we're on the verge, though, of almost getting there. You know, everybody's been talking about it. Everybody understands the need. I think it's just how do we do it? And it seems like right now we've got to go to secondary sources. Right. You know, if you want to identify a problem, you got to go to secondary sources right. and apply it to your own situation. And it's probably pretty close, but it's not the same. Right. Right. Well, 
what I'll say is um, that, you know, we also in our department had this same struggle, if you'll remember, Council Member Martin, with identifying the um, under, under uh, children um, under three who um, are not in care. Um, and so what that, and I mentioned um, earlier the, the dashboard that, um, that we did, what we um, ended up doing was um, uh, contracting with a consulting firm um, that helped us look at, um, at a whole range of data, both internal data um, through children, youth, and families, and some of the external census data um, to build this dashboard. Um, there really wasn't an exact um, number. We have more of an idea of who that population is, and what I will say is that that project itself, I think, um, was upwards of $400,000. Mm -hmm. And so I wouldn't say that it's not something that we would mm -hmm. never consider doing. Um, I think it, it comes to, okay, what are the priority areas then? If we are going to bring forth a data project that is gonna cost you know half a million dollars, um, do we wanna do that to Ronnie's point um, timing-wise? Do we wanna bring that recommendation or do you all wanna bring that recommendation forward versus um, for putting um, resources into your, your program uh, services, um, your, your resource specialists? And so I think it really is, you know, looking at it from that perspective as well. Um, not that it isn't important and that, you know, maybe at some point down the line, but how do you want to phase these things in so that it's not everything at once? And I, I understand that too. Um, and I know everything is based on money. And I'm just going to say one more thing and then I'm going to stop. Okay. <laughs> um, have you even considered the idea of approaching the University of Colorado? For some of those grad students that would be in computer services as a project for them that would not cost us anything but it would give them a grade to come up with something that might be able to do something along this line and that's i'm done yeah again i think that all options are on the table and i think on the back end to really look at what's the staff's capacity to be able to supervise somebody to do that like there's always th that person would need supervision we have to have an agreement um, but I mean, it, it is something that that could be done and really looked at, you know, in the in the bigger picture of what all is going on in the division and how is that prioritized. But, but definitely, we've worked with Our college students. The question that I have, and Maria and I have talked a little bit about this, but kind of what, along what you're going to is asking for ethnicity. I mean, mm -hmm. there's been discussed too. And it always seems to come up that that's a difficult one. Uh, and, and I guess I'd like to possibly discuss that a little bit. I mean, I'm not saying we have to discuss it today, but, you know, I would sure like to say, you know, uh, Maria and I were in my presentations the other day, and it was, what, 15, 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if those are the same 15 or 20 that are going to this next one in the next program, because there's several, you know, there's some programs and you know the thing is we don't want any programs cut obviously but we also want to increase if we can get those numbers to where where they need to be but can somebody or ronnie can you help a little bit on that christina anybody jeff is we not putting anything on that go ahead yeah no we have talked about that exactly gathering more demographic information uh -huh. And it's not something that we could just implement like today, tomorrow, just with you know, process updating our registration system software is to, to have those options. How are we collecting it? In what spaces? Is it just the recreation side? Um, how, do we, how do we collect that information for our supportive services side as well? So something that we are looking at. Okay. You know, this is, <clears throat> you're right, I bring it up a lot. Uh, it's really been frustrating to, to try to get data, and I understand the problems, I do. Uh, but it, it's just really frustrating. Uh, it's good to hear that every, all the options are on the table. Uh, take that to mean that you're open to trying different things. One of the reasons I'm frustrated is, for example, we have, we've been talking about data for the last couple of years. 
we have less data available today than we did when we started talking about this a couple of weeks ago. You know, Brandy used to do a report. Uh, we don't even didn't even have a Brandy report this year. The only data that we've gotten so far, well, that's not entirely true. But the hard stuff that we really used was the number of people waiting in line for the resource specialist. That was very useful information, I think. Very tangible, very specific. Mm -hmm. But as far as other kinds of things, people and programs and different kinds of services, we don't have anything right now. December, didn't we, didn't we do a data report in December? Uh, what was that? You mean that survey? For, for, yeah, no, we did a for survey. Uh, annual data. Um, December, January, didn't we do? Uh, I don't, uh, did, am I forgetting something? Well, we didn't meet in December, so yeah, we didn't it was in January. So it would have been January. Right, I'm not criticizing no, you. No, no, I'm just saying oh, no, 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 not at all, not at all. But I'm saying that that, that information is available. Yeah. Um, and I, I just can't, I can't, I can't identify. It, it could have been that that presentation yeah. went um, to the Friends Board, but that data is available. And I think that, you know, what we can do is make sure that that same um, presentation gets put on, on this um, agenda. The other thing that I'll add, Dave, is that um, data is a focus for our department this year. In, in all, of our, um, all of our employee um, performance plans, data is, is part of what we are looking at. And so we're going to have um, a, a day-long retreat in um, August, Tony, July, August? Uh, some, end, end of July. End of July. Um, that really is going to put that um, task and that um, uh, that issue, if you will, um, on our uh, uh, on our plates. So we um, are going to look at what kinds of data, just across the board, are our um, uh, front office admins um, collecting. What kind of data are our uh, recreation um, people that, uh, 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 gathering? Um, we have broken the, the department into kind of focus areas or, or, or service um, similar uh, staff staffing um, and we're going to be working exactly on that. How can we make our data more robust? And so we are contracting with a, a, a firm called Omni uh, Research. Uh, they're going to come in and talk to staff, talk with staff about data and, and what it means to collect meaningful data. Um, and then the, the hope is that the outcome of that is that staff will um, understand what's needed in their area, will give us ideas about what kind of data we want to collect, um, and then we can include that in our year-end uh, reports and make sure to get that to, yeah. to this. And I understand the resistance from staff. Mm -hmm. You didn't say that, but I understand the resistance from staff. I understand the resistance of your staff, Ronnie, and all that. Well, we've never done it before. I know, it's tough. We've never it's done tough. it before, and that's why we want to make it something that is yeah. um, easy to understand, easy to grasp, and, and easy for um, our employees, our team members in human services to say, oh, I get this, and it's not scary. Yeah. Our, you know, our admin people are collecting qualitative data. Yeah. Our, our resource specialists are collecting data on, um, on how many... Um, how many people come in for services? How many people, for example, in, in children, youth, and families um, don't end up going, how many kids don't end up going uh, formally into the court system? And so as work groups, our teams are gonna, are gonna discuss that. All right, more input. What do you want? What do you wanna do? I wanna wait. You're gonna wait? Yeah, I, I thought I would get assigned to something in some of the areas that I'm interested in for Covered, but I like to do something that hasn't been done. Okay. So I'll have something for you next week. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Those were just suggestions, folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you, know, you don't have to sign up for something right now, but if yeah. you have an idea and you want to put it out so that we can hear it, and yeah. then you can do that. I'm God, sorry. I shoot my mouth off all the time. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Nothing happens, right? Yeah, nobody pays attention. <laughs> all right. To excuse um, myself to have another meeting, but please. Okay, please well, thank you for coming. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? Ann? Um, I've been thinking a lot about this, uh -huh. about, you know, what issue needs investigation, and things are pretty well covered, I will say that. So, 
I'm food is a big issue with me, nutritional. Food. Good one. Mm-hmm. And so that interests me. But also what interests me is I see one of our purposes to establish recommendations for guidelines and policies facilitating the senior center. And I think if we could spend more time on the senior center, because that is one of our purposes as a group, discussing it just to update things. As I read Ronnie's report, I I have a few questions that are Mm -hmm. simple, but need answers. Thank you. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know quite where you were going with that. Um, were you also saying that um, we would recommend more policies and procedures, guidelines? No, no I just think we should spend a little more time discussing okay. what's happening okay, at gotcha. the senior center. Gotcha. Yeah, because there's so much going on here and yeah. so many changes. Like I just heard, Ronnie, that hours are going to change next month, mm-hmm. like for a recreation class. And Expand. Yeah, it's, so it's good if we all know those. So when people ask, we're familiar yeah. with them. That was reported at the last board meeting, the, the, yeah. the, the visual hours. Yeah, well, I mean the hours in the morning. Like there's an 8 o'clock uh, exercise class here. Now I guess it's going to start at 8.30. Right. Oh, okay, I wasn't familiar with that. Yeah. I know That's you're going to have something in the evenings, okay. which so, is huge. I mean, I think yeah. we should discuss and, and that. And, I, and that's even it's an opportunity yeah, here for that now. I don't put those things on the board just because it's just a shift in a, a program. Um, I mean, it's it's. I, I don't know if we need that information for for the board, but if we do, I, I can put those in here. But yeah. opportunity for as one that attends so much at uh, the senior center, yeah. it's truly. I see how valuable it is to people. Right. It's just, it's the core for many of us to come here. Yeah, and we, and we can unpack that now if that's okay. Or we can wait for Matt. Oh, we should it. probably move on, right, Dave? No, no, no your point well taken, though. Okay. No, we, we can address that. If you have questions, bring them up. Contact me, contact Ronnie. Put them on the agenda. We'll talk about them. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, we, know, we know, you know, we got three, we got four or five of no, new members here, so. A lot of stuff to digest. What would happen if we just had one meeting where we talked about a lot of these things? I we mean, could. Yeah, we could. Maybe in the start of the year or something. I don't know. Uh, Lonnie suggested um, a meeting that we had with Harold. Maybe that should be, if we have another one like that, which I hope we do, but if we have another meeting with Harold, Maybe have that independent of a board meeting, so we just have a just kind of a wide open discussion with Harold on you know, everything without the constraints of trying to follow an agenda. You know, Good idea. Maybe something like that yeah. could be worked out. Okay. So anyway, all good ideas. Anything else? Okay. I got my two. I got my two cents. I'll give myself one minute. Um, data. That's one thing I would like to work on. And what I would like to work on is, you know, listen to all of this stuff. And I still think we can do more. And I think that uh, my focus has been maybe backwards. Uh, my focus has been on trying to uh, think of encourage an internal reporting system and that data could be fed to management and to us. I'm not quite sure that that's going to work very well, at least right now. We don't have the system in place to collect that information. But I don't, that's my opinion anyway. And maybe the approach needs to be more, what is the information that we need? Marsha, you said something, I think a couple of meetings ago, there's a lot of data out there and ask, you know, if you need, you need some kind of data, ask for it. So I guess what I'm thinking as far as data is concerned is what is it that they want and where could we ask for it and how could we integrate it into our, our knowledge base so that we, without necessarily putting the, you know, a burden on you to, to get that information. But there's lots of information out there and maybe, uh, that's one minute, um, maybe that would be a better approach, at least for the time being, because it's maybe just beyond the, the resources right now. So anyway, that's that's one area that I'm throwing out. And the other area, nobody's mentioned, 
and that's uh, <clears throat> sustainability, and uh, that's a hot item, no pun intended. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff coming up that can, that can impact seniors, you know, what about, what if we, I, I'm afraid for the summer we're going to have an ungodly hot summer, and I wouldn't be surprised <coughs> if we have older people dying of uh, heat exhaustion or whatever, if that sort of thing's a problem. Is there anything that we can do as far as making as council aware or making recommendations, specific recommendations that might mitigate that? And we've got a person at the city, <clears throat> Lance, this is the same. Okay. Anyway, there's a guy in charge of all that up at the city. He could come in and talk to us about that. So that's another way. Uh, sustainability, in particular, heat mitigation. So, anyway. Any got anybody got anything else? Okay, we'll talk more about that uh, at our next meeting. Okay, did we get everything out on the table? All right. <clears throat> uh, oh, reports, best approach. Did you want to talk about that or should I? Um, I mean, it was just mentioned in the last board meeting that an opportunity to to reevaluate how reports are being shared out. Um, I mean, I don't know if you want to leave that discussion or not. Uh, maybe we don't need to say anything. Uh, what we agreed to about a year ago was uh, that we, we made our reports. This is, again, for the new people. We made our reports at the meeting. And if we got to them, it, it, you know, it, it, it got to be a long time, a time consuming thing. So we decided, I think it was your idea, mm -hmm. that we uh, submit them ahead of time. You can read through it, and if you have questions, uh, you can ask questions at the regular meeting. And that's the proposal, and if you want to do that, we don't have to change anything. If you want to change it some way, now's the time to talk about it. I, I think pretty much we're responsible for reading them, and I think most of us probably not. Do I think it. most people do. You know, and, and, and if there's a question, we can bring it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody okay with that? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll leave it as is. All right. And then, uh, all right, reports. Uh, we got 25 months. Manager's report. Yeah, I'll spend five minutes because um, I just want to clarify and maybe use that opportunity to have any questions that has around uh, programs, morning, morning program shifting back 30 minutes. Um, as we know, all know, we as of today, May 1st, and we communicated last board meeting that we are uh, closing off the east door uh, per, per risk, risk management's um, recommendations for safety and security for, for, for our guests. Um, it's, an, it's an unmonitored and managed door. And so, you know, now we, we're in a position where everybody is coming through the front door and our staff is able to um, monitor who's, who's in our facility. And so with those recommendations, it was an assessment of safety. Um, you know, right now we have, we have uh, um, silver sneakers classes starting at 8 a.m. Our building doesn't open until 8 a.m. So doors are opening at 7.30, 7.45 as soon as guests are starting to arrive and our custodians letting them in, inside of our facility. Um, so, you know, for, for safety, it, it's an unmanaged building where our doors are open. It's not our custodian's responsibility to, to manage um, all participants coming in for these programs and anybody who's not coming in to our facility for these programs before 8 a.m. So working with the recreation uh, fitness coordinator also saw, saw value. Uh, and, I, and I want to go back to safety concerns because what we're, ha what we're seeing there is for any reason, you know, doors are not open at 745, I'm talking 746, 747. We have people going in, participants going into the Mills and Wills, or in our facility to the Mills and Wills um, entrance and exiting the facility to the Mills and Wills, um, which is a kitchen entrance for, for staff. And so uh, it, it being a safety concern, programs were shifted back to start at 8.30 to allow, to, to remove our custodian from the one for uh, opening the front door and having to mon monitor and manage guests and non, I'll say all guests, participating or not participating in our programs, right, it's an open door, um, to uh, remove that from their responsibility, that's not, that's not their responsibility. So what we're doing now is working with, again, 
recreation program fitness order coordinator shifting start times collectively from our location i believe in the rec center back to 8 30 or pushing it back to 8 30 allowing our staff the opportunity to open up the front door and 30 minutes for guests to arrive get settled not have to rush um, get set up and start it at an 8 30 time um, you know feedback from 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 that coordinator saw great value in this but like mills and wills um, director saw great value in this and um, again it and the custodian manager saw great value in this our custodian is part of our staff part of our team but is not the, it is not part of my staff they have their own manager who manages custodians across the whole whole city so um, you know looking at it from all three of those angles um, great value in shifting programs to 830 for safety specifically when did this go into effect or has it gone it into has not gone into effect how are you going to communicate this so uh, communication went out today with signage um, so we have signs in our facility uh, mills and wills today uh, the the fitness instructor was able to communicate it out last week, I believe, in, in, in coordination with the fitness coordinator as well. Um, that was their timeline to communicate to the guests. Um, but, uh, specifically, May 1st, May 1, today, we have signage around our facility advertising for June. This is this is not gonna take place till June. June. Yeah, so plenty of time for this information to get out there. Everybody understand the reason why, us to address questions that may come up, myself and Amy. Our, uh, our, our program supervisor, and um, we're advertising in the go as well, which is scheduled to come in in this week. So, plenty of time to advertise it out, but that is the reason why. Ronnie, I think that's an excellent idea because sometimes I come to the eight o'clock class, and people are here before the door open, before the door's supposed to be open, and it always seemed a little, I don't know, odd. Right. And who, like, who's opening that door for them? And so right. I think this is great. Right. So awesome. with the focus on safety and security, yeah. we're mm -hmm. having staff again. Same and when does the go come out? Because there's people have been getting different answers. Oh, it was supposed to be yesterday. It was supposed, it's coming Friday. Our timeline is this week. We're hoping by the end of uh, Friday so we can hand them out at the um, um, at, at Secret of Yeah. Oh, oh, that's excellent, because I'm volunteering there, yeah. yeah. So I, I have an email in here somewhere. I, I, I saw it come through right before this meeting started, um, but our communication is before the end of this week, Friday at the latest. That's a great idea. Yeah. So based on the, the safety concern and the fact that we've moved things back, that's an excellent information for us on the, on the board to know, because I don't like people asking me questions, and then I have to say, I'm sorry, I don't know why that happened, yes. but I'll find out. I'd rather have the information ahead of time, you know, so that I could say this is the what happened. Right. So I appreciate that, yeah. knowing that. Exactly. That's what's been happening to me because I'm at the rec center a lot and we're all seniors and people are bringing something up like, I don't know. Great. Right. So that's my misunderstanding for this one, uh, this particular adjustment. Uh, but, you know, I do my best to get you all the information you yeah. need in advance. Valuable. Um, but between this meeting and next meeting, some things will will come up about that I won't be able to inform you until the next next meeting. And if those fun. things do come about, yeah. please don't hesitate to reach out and say, hey, you got this question, how do I, okay. you know, what information can I provide? Um, and you can always, at the same time, direct them to me. Um, you know, there's a, we get a lot of, a lot of questions and concerns, and even our staff, you know, I equip them with information they need to, to have um, um, surface level conversations on any adjustments we're making. But you know, my directive to them is if the conversation becomes uncomfortable, you don't have the, uh, the time needed to address those, uh, those concerns, meaning your schedule didn't allow uh, appointments, things like that, uh, just send them my way. And, and I have no problem following up on those, those uh, questions. Thank you. So we're making those adjustments, a lot of adjustments around safety specifically. Um, but, so yeah, that won't be in effect until June, June 1. Yes. Uh, when does coffee with leadership start? Well, it just starts in June. Yeah. But is that going to be here? That will be here. Um, we'll either reserve a spot in the lobby or in one of the, uh, the rooms. Um, but we're just looking to see if we can, if we have some interested 
listeners who want to participate in that. And so it would be great. Yeah, thank you. And so what all that is is an opportunity for us to get to know our, our, our patrons, our, our guests, um, our regulars, and um, them to get to know us, us to know them. And um, you know, we're, it'll be a controlled, a controlled space again. It's the whole the whole purpose is to build those relationships, not to build um, complaints, <laughs> suggestions. You know, we'll we'll encourage that to come come be, be brought forth here at, at our board meetings. Uh, but again, does that mean we're not open to the feedback? Do you no, want to it could be a separate conversation though. So this is what you want to yeah. talk about. Though? What's the draw for bringing them in just to meet them? Just to meet, yeah, <laughs> to make those connections. <laughs> yeah. So um, you know, we do a lot. This board, does, we were just talking about it. This board is is very uh, high functioning. I'll say high functioning uh, and supportive, and it's it's important for us, our guests, to make those connections with you, mm -hmm. with us. You know, um, uh, as staff as well, will be present, um, but leadership specifically to 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 make those connections on who 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 our supports are, and share at what level you do you support what it looks like for you um, to support them, our senior center as a whole, our programs, our supportive services, and answer any questions around that work as well. I think that the last meeting it was that you mentioned that perhaps there would be. Uh, talks at night, you would continue with the everyday activities into the evening hours. With the ex expanded hours um, in September, that is correct. Okay. So September, um, that's what I do have here on the, my agenda as well as in September, mm -hmm. uh, we will be rolling it or pushing our hours back Monday through Thursday until 8 p.m. So we'll be open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. Friday will remain the same, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then Saturday hours, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And so um, Amy right now, our, our recreation program supervisor, um, as of today, is, 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 has opened it up to contractors, uh, facilitators, program instructors to field those ideas, identify how we start programming uh, on those expanded hours as well. So uh, we'll be intentional with it. We want to address a couple things, some of those popular programs, maybe a second offering and bring some new ideas to the table as well. And, uh, you know, be, be a draw. Our, our goal is to to attract new guests um, to, to our facility. And, you know, maybe it's an additional fitness program in the evening, maybe it's a fitness program in the morning on that Saturday. Uh, you know, we're, 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 we're in that process right now. It's exciting. Yes. It's exciting. Big, yeah. Good report. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry if I went over five minutes. I'm sorry? Sorry if I went over five minutes. Oh, well, <laughs> I'll, I'll make a note of it. <laughs> the time police are on to you. <laughs> There's something else. <laughs> okay, City Council liaison. Oh, well, I have been a crappy City Council liaison this month because. Um, I'm not well and my life is blowing up, so I, I apologize. Um, can't help it. Um, so I don't really have a, a huge amount of, of news. I'm really happy with you guys because you're really getting into the, you know, let's be a more high functioning board. So, as, you know, as Rhonda said, and, and I, I just am, am thrilled. Uh, to see that I I'm thrilled most of all I think of all the things that have happened well we don't really I think realize what a big deal it is that we have been allowed to extend the hours of this center but it is a it's a vast change in terms of the potential impact on the community we serve and it's also a you know, it's like giving a 30% a bonus to the facility, city's facilities budget because we didn't have to build more capacity. And and I, I just can't tell you how important that idea of being efficient uh, and thoughtful in the use of resources, um, you know, really, really is. Um, I... Um, my 
biggest concern policy wise uh, is housing right now uh, because uh, of a growing attitude in the city of, of trying to pull inward. You know, I mean, the population we serve are already pulled inward, right? You know, um, but that doesn't mean that the that that the city gets to be allowed to wither and shrink. You know, in fact, it's it's even more important for seniors who have limited capacity to restart their lives um, uh, that the city doesn't wither and shrink because, because the services that the city provides need to be growing. They need, you know, as, as the aging population becomes a larger and larger proportion of our uh, population, then the services for those people need to be capable of growing. And that really means we need, we're gonna stop this. We've got to be more welcoming to to young people and they need to be able to afford to live there if no other reason than they can take care of people who are ten years older than any of us and need to be taken care of. You know, so it is an important the the demographic shift in this city is an important policy matter that matters to us. And the, the demographic that is 10 to 15 years younger than we are doesn't get that. You know, they just, they, they're, they're just wanting everything to stay the same and they're not looking at the long-term consequences of that to us, <coughs> to their children, and to them in 10 or 15 years. You know, so I, I consider it a huge problem for the city and, um, I don't know what this group can do to, to kind of reverse that that trend, but you know, I, I, I my personal feeling is that we need much more of a welcome to Longmont attitude, uh, a, a, a stay in Longmont. You know, people, uh, when they look at the city's housing policy, they say, well, we don't need to grow, we don't need new businesses, and we don't need people to look at moving here and stuff and you know when we did our housing needs assessment and 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 came up with the idea that we need 12 to 14 thousand new housing units that's not for new businesses and economic expansions and stuff like that that is our children growing up and choosing not to stay not to leave or being able to choose not to leave people are aging out of foster care and things like that you know um, and commuters who um, are making lower end wages, retail, teachers, nurses, uh, all, you know, professional, lower end, lower half professional people can't live here. And our quality of life is much better if they do because they're available to us and they're more committed to the city. And that is, those are the only people we're talking about that we want to live in Longmont. Um, so I think what I'm, the reason I'm giving that under the policy report is because in order to preserve our quality of life, I feel like we need to do something about changing that attitude and evangelizing the idea that, no, this isn't somebody's economic ambition. This is just how an economy works. And we need to keep the economy working and vibrant. Um, so um, that's not necessarily the policy of the council because some of the council people either are in that demographic that would just like to um, keep everything the same or want the votes of that demographic that keep every, wants to keep that, that everything the same. But it's the conclusion that I've reached after um, working for six years on this council. So since there's not really anything earth shattering to say, developing on council right now because it's the beginning of budget season and I don't have much to report. Oh, okay. I, thought I, I thought I'd give you my spiel. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Thank you. 
And I was glad to see so many heads nodding. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, all right, area, agent, area agency on aging. Do you have anything today, Lonnie? I do, and I did submit a report. Did you ever get them? So I didn't get it originally. I got your email this morning before this morning. But so did I you get it off. yesterday? I didn't, okay. but I got copies um, right for everybody. And I can send, I, you can just send them to people if you want to. Um, I did do a report on both. And one thing, I'm just going to go through this real quickly. May is Older Americans Month. It's being referred to as OAM. And the theme is Powered by Connections. And it's doing a lot to um, look at relationships and social con connections with our health and well-being. Um, so that is what the AAC is looking at and the Boulder County Area on Aging. Um, in fact, the woman who Lindsay is our connection there, and she actually went to DC and met with Mike Bennett, and the chief of staff, and John Hickenlooper. And it gives an update in my report on everything, you know, the main points that they discuss and the main issues that they're supporting and trying to push forward in legislation. So um, locally, um, there's a list of the uh, bills that we've been talking about and supporting. So you can see where they're at. Um, funny, a lot of them are coming up on today. No, today? <coughs> yes. yeah. May 1st, it came up yesterday. So if anybody's interested in finding out if it, if it made any movement, you can look it up on the, um, legislature, the state legislature's website and see where they went with it. And other than that, there's just, there was a ton of information um, from last month's meeting. So I included a lot of links that if people are really interested in finding out more information, they can just go on those links and you can look into it further. Um, such as there's, a, there's the BCAAA annual report was attached. Thank you. And, um, and other things were attached. So if you have any questions, just let me know. But there are some good links on there for further information in case you have any more questions. Does anybody have anything they want to ask about? No? Okay. okay. So move on to housing. Housing, um, we're just really following what's still going on, like the um, LHA affordable housing projects. But the one thing and Sheila, you can speak to this. Sheila was wondering if we wanted to have Molly O'Donnell from LHA and, and an area services. Okay. Yeah. Um, and um, um, a developer come in and speak to us further about affordable housing and attainable housing. And if anybody feels like we need to hear that information and get a clarification on that, hear more information about it. Um, we can discuss whether we want to have that on a future a person come in and speak to us um, at a future meeting. Oh. And other than that, all the other housing information you can get on the report. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think everybody's okay with that, uh, having an LHA report at a, at a future date, maybe two or three meetings down the road. Is that all right? Everybody okay with that? Yes. Let me know if you got a problem. Yeah. Well, we did just have them. We had one. Yeah, about June yeah. or something last something year. Something like that. Yeah. 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 So it wasn't that. Right. You might, I don't even know if you were on the board at that time. I was. Yeah. Oh, yep. okay. Molly was here. My first meeting was Molly and Lisa. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Then, uh, friends, did you want to say anything? Yeah, I am. I was unwell and did not attend the friends meeting. <clears throat> Um, I did ask one of the friends board members to let me know if there was anything that was um, that she felt was important for, to share with this board and I did put a few paragraphs in a, in a report on this so I apologize for it being as brief as it was but some um, circumstances um. Our relationship as friends is something I'd like to talk a little bit further about, not today, but some further agenda. Mm -hmm. And and uh, BCAAA, I'd like to talk about that a little bit too. Sure. I'm thinking about you know, liaisons that we should probably try to um, 
collaboration that we should try to enhance, I guess is what I'm trying to say. We can talk about that some other time. Okay, future uh, sustainability, I always said, I already told you what I think about that. Uh, they have meetings quarterly, and so that's why I only have something to say every three months. Uh, future agenda items. We have a full agenda already because John has a proposal. That's going to take some time. Uh, I think it's a good proposal. I have a feeling that people are going to want to talk about that. Uh, we'll finish up the uh, annual report, and that's going to take a little time. And so, so what I, I'm just leaving that future agenda item as is, uh, unless anybody wants to add anything additionally, I did put the annual report and presentation on as a future agenda item. Anybody have any other agenda? Uh, yes. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, because uh, the June meeting is the last chance to uh, finalize what's going to be presented or sent to council, mm -hmm. um, do you need to uh, uh, nominate a couple of paralyzed meetings uh, to work on it in the interim, or um, do you think it can happen in the council, in the, in the meeting itself? I think we'd be wise. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think we'd be wise to do it beforehand, to get some people together to go over the letter and to determine it beforehand to, and then bring it to council for any further discussion. To, or, to the board? Bring it here. To or, I'm sorry, bring it to the board. Okay. Uh, do we have a problem with the, uh, the committee versus a working group on that? It, it Just as long as it's two people or less. Well, how about, is it okay if Lonnie and I work on it? <laughs> Unless somebody else wants to do it in, instead of me. I don't mind working on it, but that throws it into three, and then it has to be a, a meeting. Yes. You could have, you could have a, a, a serial event, yeah. so you could have one group of two do one thing, do and that. one group of two do, like, convert, yeah. final, rework it, and then somebody else converts it to PowerPoint, mm -hmm. you know, or, or list of topics for public invited to be heard. There's lots of ways to break it up into two committees. Okay, well, let me ask first, who wants to work on that? Lonnie is one, Eric is another. Okay, Sheila. Okay. Do you want to, Arlene? Yeah, but I, I think you've got a, a full load. I, well, we yeah. can have as many well, people as we want. We just have to meet to yeah, a time. You can, only, you can only talk about it in pairs. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, that, in, that includes emails. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. Yeah. You can email your outcome of a meeting to David, and then he can send it out. And then if we're if I'm discussing something with Dave, only he and I can email. Right. 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 Yep. Okay, you folks. We have. I don't six. know if we need a, We don't need a chairman or anything, but if you folks will communicate back and forth on the, on the on the report and how we might make the presentation, the rule points, and all that stuff that we talked about. I think we have to be more specific, don't we? Like oh, look, the things that we talked about. Uh, what do you mean? The back and forth things is what I'm worried about. Oh, oh, okay. Well, um, who wants to be in charge? Somebody want to be in charge? I'll be in charge. Okay, you be in charge, and you take the lead as far as contacting Arlene and Eric and Lonnie and getting that together. No more than two people talking about it or communicating about it at any given time. And then when you're done, you send it to me. I'll review it. I'll send it out. I'll give it to Ronnie for the next meeting. Okay. That's all I can plan. Oh, I'll get out. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Just yes. I'm going to talk real fast. Um, the transportation and mobility plan asked if they could meet with us in June, and it is on the agenda. Yes. It asked for an hour, and the handout that you just got are what I call starter questions, so that when we do get together, the art will be most efficient in our time, because we've got a pretty diverse organization here that we should be able to come up with some, some answers. That's it. So they're in our they're on the agenda for June. I'm sorry? They're on the agenda for June. Yeah, we have one on the agenda for June. Right I don't know about an hour though. Could, could they ask them about 45 minutes? Depends on how much we, I don't know, it depends on what all they because yeah. I'd, okay. ask, I'd ask for an hour originally, but uh, if you want it less than that, I'll tell them. Well, I don't know. It's, that's, uh, we always have a crowded agenda. Think about it. Yes, Lonnie. 
the idea that that's going to be our last to be able to put our presentation together. Yes. May we may be wise to leave a little bit more time for that. Uh, I, I agree. So maybe making the transportation update, see if you can yeah. make it a little shorter, will give us a little more time to allow ourselves to get this all together. Yeah. Now, now who's this. coming to the meeting? Okay. The transportation got... mobility plan and um, Greenwald will be here. Okay. And, and I so think some of the people from that committee yeah, will we're, Greenwald. We're, we're going to have a, a tight agenda. Yeah. Well, now wait a minute. Now, John won't take all that much time. All he needs to do is lay out the idea. And he can do that in just a few minutes. Or could he come in July? Yeah. Why didn't I think of that? All right, fine. What is LHA going to do? I'm sorry? What is LHA on the agenda for? Well, local they're Housing not Authority. The, they're not on the agenda. That's just a future one. That's just future. Oh, okay. Yeah, we talked about that. Okay. Oh, okay. You know, I gotta say, I do think this is a remarkable board. I do. All right, anything else? Just a quick thing. We have a full board, a full board at this point. I'm sorry? We have a full board? Yes. yes. So they be looking for volunteers? In, I mean, will they be opposed to you? that uh, we'll have openings for sure. For yeah, I, and I'll, we can get you that information. I think the next <coughs> appointment to the senior board would come at the end of this year. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll verify that. And, and well, that's not important. I just want to see if we're having a board, why would we want to, if we're at full board, why would we want to propose that we would? Well, there are terms that everybody has, and, and I don't know when terms mm -hmm. end, but oh, I can does, verify. Anybody have a term ending this summer? Uh, not this summer, I mean, but the end of the year. I think or, mine in December. Oh, two I people think. with the, on the end of term. I'm only here for a year. Oh, you're on finished term of Beth. Right, exactly. Okay. But right. you can re up if you want to. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, just, yeah. you're just getting going. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Anything else? Nope. All right. Uh, I'll have a. Uh, entertain a motion for adjournment. That's good for sure. So okay, Lonnie moves. Second. Second. Eric. All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We're done. Yeah. <laughs>